I took uh, my high school sweetheart and senior year prom to go see Bill Maher at the Celebrity Theater in Phoenix in 1996. Nice. That was in the round, right? Yeah, Theater in the Round. It was a kick-ass show. It really was. And to this day, you know, every time, every Friday when I watch him, I'm like, you know, I went and saw him that one time. And he's not one of my favorite comics today, but his show is one of my how favorite shows. How dare you? Yeah, how, how, how dare, dare I? You. His show is one of my favorite shows. I appreciate I his, his show more. His show more. is very important, and I think you have to be that kind of a guy to do that kind of a show. He's, and he yeah. commits yeah. to his it, show. man. His show's yeah. great. He matters. Yeah, his show's great. That show's monologue's great. the best important. in the business, I say. Yeah, he's got, look, he's got great writers. He's a great, he's a great comic himself. He's an all-star team. I like him since he was very on Comedy Central with that show. Yeah. That show started on Comedy Central. I did it. I did it on Comedy Central. Comedy Central. Then it went to ABC. I did it like two. And you know what's yeah. really cool about him? When that Rush Limbaugh thing happened, he actually stepped up and was like, we cannot live in a yeah. society where guys lose their jobs for saying things. Because I did with Politically Incorrect. He got bamboozled. He got fucked. Well, not really. You know, I think it was Wrong better for him. To say that. I think it was better for him. I think, you know, b- being in a place where they're going to, like, censor him and pull him back, I don't think the show would have ever reached its true potential. Right. The show that he has now, I think, is a far superior show. Way it's, superior. It's, more, it's a, a le- intellectually more superior because he doesn't have to constantly look to only celebrities. Now he's getting, like, really fascinated. Yeah, he's not having these and, conversations yeah. with, like, Florence agree, Henderson. Right. It's so great. Every now and then he'll throw, <laughs> like, a most deaf in the mix. Let me see that lighter. You know, and which can go great or terrible. Yeah, yeah you have seen we got to clean with. things up. Did Bill? you see he him? He always has a more fun deaf. guest at the end now. Like well, he, they, yeah, they I saw most deaf. It, it was less than well, impressive. He was, well, he'd been there many times, but one time he went on with Christopher Hitchens. And I love it was, Hitchens, uh, man. And he's dead now, you know that? Yeah. Mm-hmm. yeah. Wait, who's Christopher Hitchens? He's the, a, the atheist, a brilliant. The most famous atheist yeah, ever. One of the most famous atheists. Yeah. Just brilliant. Yeah, brilliant, brilliant writer. You know who was great on that show was John Hamm. Did you see that one? No. Uh, so anyway, um, <laughs> Hitchens, Hitchens is on with Most Deaf, and Most Deaf doesn't know the difference between Al Qaeda and the Taliban. They don't understand. He didn't. He didn't like. He's like, well, somebody needs to tell me. And then you know, Hitchens sort of like broke down, like all of his like kind of exposed his lack of understanding about this thing that he was talking about. With, I mean, he had an opinion on it. Yeah. But it was like the way Christopher Hitchens did it was so dismissive of like Most Deaf's intellect. It was. It was really like it was. It was you know. It's like. He took him to like, if you're gonna have a disc contest, you know. Yeah. He took him to his place. Well, because he goes. He took him there. to his, he dragged Mo's death into an intellectual war and drowned him. No, we really quickly. You know, like, come here. Let me hold on here for a out. second. We'll yeah. Plunge. He goes in there saying the basic yeah. bumper sticker shit a lot of liberals or so-called right. liberals would say. And the problem with Hitchens is he's he was very left wing on a lot of issues, but he he was a, you know he's an atheist, but he's also he believes in war. You know, he he believes there are bad people out there, and he believes right. that you know we do some good by uh, overruling dictators and taking them out of the mix. So he was a complex guy to to have an argument with, especially for most deaf. Most deaf guy, yeah. Yeah, I like <coughs> most deaf. It's no, not, I nothing bad it's on the guy. It's just sometimes you don't realize you can't talk a certain way around a dude like that. Yeah, he'll take you to task yeah. every yeah. time. That's, he's, that's like, his job. He is an intellectual. And he's it's, a that's why you got professional intellectual. Give it up to Bill Maher though, because he fucking holds his own with anybody. Of course he does. You know, and that's, Bill Maher doesn't you know like him or hate him. He does not talk about something that he does not know about. Yeah. No wait. I, here's my question because I'm kind of on. I've been toying with this in my head. What responsibility do you feel like you have to uh, have a hundred percent informed opinion about everything and uh, and 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 in comedy and not just come out half cocked and have this fucking easy idea, like like something about something like say misogyny or 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 race or just like a half cocked idea just mm-hmm. for the laugh well, for I the bit for I the bit all of us right, for all the of us have seen a guy go on stage with sort of a half cocked idea about a complex issue and it's it makes you disregard the rest of his material because if you do one thing where i don't feel like you've done enough work to allow me to let you think for me you know a guy's killing a guy's thinking for me when when joey diaz is on stage and he's crushing He's thinking for me. I'm not thinking there. I'm, I'm going along with what he's doing. I got a big yeah. smile on my face. I'm listening to what he's saying. I'm reacting and laughing along. But you got to be good to let me do that. Because if you're not good, if you say something stupid or forced or fake or I think you're using a trick or I think you're being facetious or I what if I think you're doing anything where it's not, you know, you're trying to pander to the audience, the, immediately it goes away. And then I think this guy's not that good. You know, why'd you word it like that? Why, why'd you say it like this? That sounds like ego. This is... The illusion is yeah. gone. So then you're looking at it as an outsider, and you're, so it kills it. It kills it. It kills, it kills the vibe of the comedy. The only way comedy ever works is if it's good. 
Well, the attacks against the United States have sent the entertainment world into a tailspin. Television executives backing away from violent programming, and no one knows what will be considered funny in this environment. Add sensitive advertisers to the mix, and political correctness of a different sort may be here.